Hi, in this video I will show you how you can use IFTT in a typical PO migration project. In such projects you usually migrate your PI PO interfaces to a system with a higher release. So this is one of the factors. You migrate to a different version of the environment, but most often the system release is not the only change that you will do during migration. What usually also happens is that you are reorganizing the interfaces, you are moving them to a different software components, different namespaces, you are renaming objects to be compliant with some new requirements, you will be using different communication components, you might be migrating from an old release that did not have icos and in the new release you will have them. Taking all these changes into consideration, it is a big challenge to ensure that your interfaces will be working seamlessly and that basically they will be working in exactly the same way. And what that means in PI is that the sending and the receiving systems will be sending and receiving exactly the same data with the same formats and technologies. So how can you use IFTT in such projects? Let's look at this example. Okay, we are now in our old PI system and from here we will be migrating uh, the following interface from this software component. Uh, it is a sales order interface from our customers into our ECC system. Uh, ends up as an IDOC, so uh, when we migrate we also need to migrate this software component canonical data model. And when we migrate to the new environment, we will reorganize some things to be compliant with uh, the new requirements that we have there. So now let's switch to the new PI system and let's see how we have migrated it there. Okay, we are now in um, the new repository and uh, this is our migrated interface. And as you can see, we have uh, renamed the software component that we are using right now. We are also using different uh, namespaces. They are also organized differently. We have also renamed the service interface, uh, the operation mapping. Uh, so uh, we've made a couple of changes here. Uh, what we did not change and did not want to change is the data format uh, of the message that we will accept from the customer and the data format of the message that will be sent to the ECC. Those need to stay untouched. Okay, but when we migrate, we will be also making changes in the integration directory. We will be using a different communication component and of course we'll create a different ICO in the new system. But at first let's have a look how it looked in the old one. This is the integration builder of our old PI and this is the ICO that we were using. Uh, the communication component uh, was demo system BT uh, and we used this interface in this namespace. And all these three are right now no longer valid in the new system because of our reorganization. So let's switch now to the new PI and its integration builder. And uh, what you see here is the new ICO that we will be using for our interface. As you can see, we have renamed the communication component. Right now it is named demo system NT. Uh, we are also using a different interface name because we have renamed it in the repository and of course we are using a different namespace. So taking all of these changes into consideration, what we expect to happen after migration is that when we use exactly the same message payload and send it to the new system, we will come up with the same result, meaning that the message will be accepted uh, will be mapped and will be sent to the receiving system in exactly the same format. So how can we quickly test that? Let's now switch to the IFTT cockpit and let's try to use IFTT to actually test our new interface in the new PI system. In IFTT we have a concept of landscapes. 
landscape can be your development environment, your test environment or productive environment. And each of those environments have uh, its own PI system, uh, the development one, test or production one. Um, from the cockpit that you see in here, uh, we can actually reach out to any of these environments contact the specific PI system that is there and download the specific message and store it as a test case in IFTT. So let's try and do this now. I will now switch into the change mode and we'll create a test case by downloading a message from the old PI system and storing it here in IFTT cockpit. Uh, let's name it test migration uh, we choose the interface type which tells IFTT what kind of technology it is behind uh, the interface uh, and whether we are testing a PI system only or also involving um, the backend systems in the tests. Right now in the PI migration project we are only focusing on the changes that we do in PI so PI unit test interface type is enough for us. Uh, we also need to maintain the IFTT object definition. The object definition tells IFTT what kind of interface are we actually looking at. So uh, these object definitions actually have a one-to-one -one relation to your PI interfaces. Behind each of those uh, definitions we have actual PI interfaces. Okay, and uh, the last thing that we need to do is to actually maintain uh, the message number that we want to store as a test case here. What we can use here uh, from IFTT cockpit is our message selector. And from here we are able to search for a particular message in our old PI system which is attached to system landscape called test. So uh, to limit the data that we receive, I will also filter it by the sender name. This is the uh, name of the system that is actually sending the data and we'll execute the message selector. And what I see in here is a list of all of the messages that IFTT has found in the old PI system. I will just select one and the message number is copied into the cockpit. I will now save it. And what IFTT is doing when I save the message it is it is reaching out to the PI system and it downloads the contents of this particular message number. So if we now look at the content that has been downloaded for this message, we will see, for example, the payload of uh, the message and this is the actual payload that we received from uh, the uh, customer. So this is the very first version of the message that has arrived into the old PI system when the customer sent it. Uh, but uh, we have also downloaded the version after mapping SAPPO output and we can see this version of a message after mapping also stored in IFTT cockpit. So now the challenge is that we would like to send this particular message into our new system. As you remember in the new system we have we organized some things so uh, we are also using there a different interface name. That means that to be able to send it correctly to the new PI system, we need to change the object definition of this test case. So let's right now go back into the change mode and switch the object definition to the one that is actually pointing to uh, the new interface name in the new PI system. Uh, I will now save it and switch into the display mode because only in this mode I am able to actually execute the test case. 
And I will now try to send it to the new PI system by again using the concept of uh, landscape. So I can use the option execute selected with landscape selection, which means that when I'm sending it from IFTT, I will be actually sending it to uh, a specific landscape and a specific PI that is attached to that landscape. So we have the new D, which is our newly created development landscape with the new PI system. We can select it and confirm. And right now the message will go into the new PI system. And now uh, we can see the result of uh, our test. As we can see, we did send the message to the new landscape with the new PI system, but it has failed. So we now need to figure out what is wrong with the message in the new system. We can go into the details report and actually see what has happened uh, with the message and why it failed. What we can see in here is that uh, IFTT has correctly applied uh, some of the conversions regarding the sending and receiver uh, systems. So uh, in the new uh, system, we are using a new demo destination communication component to which the message is finally uh, being sent. So all that has worked correctly, but we still have a failed test case. If we scroll down, we will see that we can actually see a comparison of the payloads that have been produced by the original message in the old PI system and by the new message that we have just sent to the new um, PI. So, so when we scroll down, we will see that we actually have some differences in one of the fields which would mean that probably there is something wrong with the mappings. So now let's have a look into the repository and the mapping. And of course, in here you see that uh, in the new system, we actually multiply uh, the quantity that is sent by the customer by 100. And as a result, we get different uh, values in the quantity field in an IDOC. So we will now try to fix it. I'll just remove the multiply function. And we'll just make a direct mapping from the quanti quantity field that is sent by the customer into the quantity field of an IDOC. And of course, we will save it and activate. OK. The change is active now. So now we can go back to IFTT cockpit and re-execute the same test case. We will again send the same message to the new PI system. But this time it should actually work properly. So again, we specify the new development environment. And yes, it works now. After the change that we did in the mappings, we've sent exactly the same message to the new PI system. And now the uh, result of a test case is passed. And if we go into the details report, we will see that we no longer have any differences in the field that uh, we were uh, experience, experiencing differences uh, before. So. This is how IFTT can help you in such migration projects. You download some example messages from your old PI system and you store them as test cases in the IFTT cockpit and then you change the object definitions to point to the new interface that you have created in the new system and you just execute them by sending them to the new environment. But keep in mind that uh, this was just an example based on one message and IFTT shows its best when we do mass testing. So in exactly the same way, we could 
actually download thousands of messages into our cockpit, save them as test cases, rename the object definitions and send them to the new PI system. Uh, the advantage of mass testing approach is that the more cases you test, the more confident you can be that you tested actually every scenario because you know how it is with, for example, PI mappings. Some parts are only triggered in very specific cases and having hundreds or thousands of test messages can help you ensure that your interface will work properly in every scenario. So let's now try to uh, create some more test cases. Again, we will use the same interface type and the same object definition pointing to the old interface. We will reach out to uh, our old PI system and just download whatever we find there. We click on transfer all and all of those messages that you see on the screen will be actually transferred into our cockpit. And right now we just need to save them so that IFTT downloads the contents of these messages. And once they are saved, we will change the object definitions so that they are now pointing to the new interface in the new PI system. There we go, we have them all saved and now for all of them we will amend the object definition to point to the new interface. Let's just do it for those. Again, save it. And we will send all of those messages for which we have renamed the object definition into the new environment. And see how quick that is. We've sent 21 messages and we already have the results for all of them. And we can see that everything worked correctly for all of them. Uh, IFTT did not recognize any differences between the result that was produced in the old PI system and the result that is produced right now by, by the new uh, PI system. And that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, for more information on IFTT, please visit our website int4.com. Thanks and have a good day.